Now that it's October, I want to do a review of Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, sometimes abbreviated as MNSSHP, which is an event that happens in Disney World every year, and we attended in 2014, so this might be a little bit dated, but most of the information should still be good. I probably see this question a hundred times a day on different Disney pages. Is the Halloween party worth the price of admission? And to get straight to the point, I would say yes for teens and young adults, but probably not for children under 12. Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party happens in the Magic Kingdom and it makes that park exclusive to guests of the Halloween party from 7 p.m. until midnight, I think. And that's quite a chunk of time, don't get me wrong, but that's still not enough time to take advantage of everything. Maybe not even half of what they offer, but one cool feature is that Fast Pass is turned off, so most rides have a 20 minute or less wait because of that. Well, if a picture's worth a thousand words, then let me go ahead and open up my family album here. The party starts at 7 p.m., but you can come into the park as early as 4, and everyone who bought a pass to attend the Halloween party should have a special wristband, and that way you can line up for things early. One of the coolest features of the Halloween party is that it has all sorts of rare characters that only come out during this fall Halloween season. We lined up for Jack and Sally at about 5.30, and like a Halloween Town miracle, they came out at 6 instead of 7. Jack and Sally are my favorite, and you can tell because this is one of the few pictures I actually got in. But I knew Captain Jack Sparrow was also a hard man to catch, so we went searching for him next. Since it wasn't 7 p.m. yet, we actually rode Pirates of the Caribbean first, which had like a 5 minute wait time, but then we found Jack's station and lined up a few minutes before 7 p.m., and we were the third group in line. Next, we tried to get to Tarzan and Jane, but the line was so long and the handlers were calling out the 10 minute warning, so we moved on and ran into Jafar instead. After that, it was pretty close to the parade time, so we waited around for that to start. At least in 2014, they did two parades a night and they were both identical. However, the second parade is way less crowded. It was a really cool parade and I was a total fan of the music. Boo to you. I'm not sure the official song titles, but I would guesstimate that they're entitled Boo to You and Good to be Bad. It's a pretty long parade and everything is themed for the season. You also get to see a lot of unusual characters like the Brer Briar Bunch from Song of the South, the Sheriff of Nottingham, the Bowler Hat Guy from Meet the Robinsons. Did he have an official name? I don't know. And the Country Bears out and about on foot. I will note that Wreck-It Ralph was my favorite float just because he was one of the most modern and recognizable characters characters for smaller kids. After the parade ended, we started to focus on gathering candy and hitting the characters we missed earlier. We found Lotso from Toy Story 3 and a Monsters Inc. themed dance party. Then finally, after three attempts of seeing Pooh and the gang in costume, we finally got a space after the fireworks show. And the fireworks were pretty cool, but I just didn't really have the technology in 2014 to record on the go. And even though I am a professional photographer, I cannot photograph fireworks. Fireworks, my one weakness. Anyways, Eeyore and Piglet are usually found exclusively in the Crystal Palace as part of their character meals, but for Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, they join Pooh and Tigger in costume, and it's so cute. After that, we tried to nab Jasmine and Jeannie. Those two have a meet together, and they switch out periodically with Aladdin and Abu. While waiting in line, they told us we would be the first family to see Jeannie, but a Aladdin really took a shine to my kids. I think he felt bad for my son standing in line since it was mostly girls behind us. So Aladdin walked up after being told it was time to go and grabbed my son asking him to come visit Abu. He completely ignored his handler and confused her to where she and the photo pass photographer were talking to each other. Like, maybe he didn't hear you. But those two were so great. I always love meeting Aladdin at Disney World. He's the best. We were gonna get back in line for Jeannie and Jasmine but at that point it was almost 11 and my kids were not willing to wait anymore. That's okay though, Aladdin made it extra special anyways. Then finally, after four laps around the park and getting turned away each time, we successfully stumbled into Tarzan, Jane, and Turk. 
but it was the one station without a photo pass photographer, which was really odd. My camera was flashing red at this point, but it barely held out for a few quick shots. Now on the downside, there were a lot of characters that we didn't get to see because it kept raining. And at Disney World, even if there's just some minor sprinkling, they tend to call in their outdoor characters. So we couldn't find the seven dwarves anywhere. And in my opinion, for how much the Halloween party cost, I found it really disappointing that Disney doesn't have a way to better address the rain issues. I mean, maybe pop-up tents or something, but come on, for all this money, we should get to meet all the characters we want. And many characters will not sign your books during the Halloween party due to the volume of guests that are trying to get through. I don't know if those issues have been handled since 2014, but I hope they have. Overall, though, we walked out of the party with about seven to eight pounds of candy per person. And yes, adults can dress up and trick-or-treat too. We paid to enter just like the kids. I did very much enjoy the rare characters and the shorter lines for rides. However, between the rain and the very crowded park, I'm not sure this event meets up with the hype it receives. And for whatever the price of admission is today, I would caution you not to spend your money to get a ticket for children under five. A lot of kids that age are just too young for an event this late, and they're dragging the floor early on in the evening, which means you pay a lot of money to not get a lot of experiences. I was shocked at how many people left after the first parade around 8.30. Like, guys, you just got here. Come on. Honestly, I would say this event is more ideal for people 15 to 30 without children who want to see the hard-to-find characters, which are a bit older and more geared towards people in that age group anyways, and those people who want to enjoy a late night of running around Disney World. Even though there was candy everywhere, I didn't really feel like this was a big event for kids. It just wasn't impressive enough for the price tag, in my opinion, compared to what a normal day in Disney World offers already. I mean, it would be a really good free party, but not particularly magical, exciting, or over the top for the price of admission. Although, if you have a season pass or park hopper ticket, I would recommend going to the Magic Kingdom on the day that the Halloween party is going to happen, meaning be there from 10 a.m. until 6 or whatever hours might be available that day. Yes, you will have to leave the park around 6 p.m., but a lot of tourists won't go to Magic Kingdom because it closes early on Halloween party nights. The crowds at Magic Kingdom during the day were actually significantly lower than they are during Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party. So that's my review, and if you have been, let me know how it's updated since 2014. Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. I get a lot of comments that say, do a theory on this topic, but I've already done those theories. So please consider going to my main channel page and clicking on the video tab so that way you can see everything I've done. You will probably find a lot of things you like that you never even knew that I posted. I want to let you know that I also have two other channels, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming and The Family Family Vlogs. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed enough to hit subscribe and share. I can use all the help I can get to let other people know that this channel exists. And if you made it this far, leave me a comment that says something like, hey, I made it to the end. And then let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. I can't make any promises, but the more people that request something, the more I can look into it. Okay, well, I love you. I'll see you in the next video.